All right, we're recording. I'm going to do a little bit of an intro and then away we go. All right, three, two, one. Hi, everyone. It's Ray and welcome back again to another episode of Inspiration in Isolation. And I'm super excited to bring you today's episode. Um, I'm not going to introduce it because I, I think it'll be better if our guest introduces it in some way, somehow I'm keeping everyone guessing. Um, but I want to introduce you to our special guest uh, today. And uh, this special guest is a, is a dear friend of mine. Um, I think we're two closest friends, part of our family extension. But I want to introduce you to uh, Sarah Jane, all the way from Nelson, South New Zealand. Say kia ora. Kia ora, everyone. Hello. As Ray Ray said, I'm Sarah Jane, um, coming all the way from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Stoked to be with you. Man, so you are in what week now in lockdown? For me, this is week five. <laughs> Why I is it week five? <laughs> week five. Um, I went overseas and got to go through the Middle East and America and landed back in New Zealand on the 14th of March and then had to go into self-isolation. And just when I saw the light at the end of the tunnel and it was going to be the end, the whole country went into lockdown. So ever since I've been in level four lockdown. That is crazy. What's it like being in lockdown for that long? Well, I'm get at the point this week when I'm finding myself really boring. <laughs> I'm so You're bored. So bored. <laughs> I'm in lockdown by myself um, and I have plenty of work to do. I still go out and exercise every day, eating well, but I'm just so bored. Yeah. I'm just so bored. <laughs> Perhaps you can do some sock puppets. <laughs> I told that you. I told you. you. <laughs> that would be you, Ray. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did tell you. I did recommend to you the other day that you should buy the a, a Wilson basketball or volleyball that you know just befriend Wilson for the next I don't know however long you got. Left. I can't in New Zealand level four. We cannot get sports gear. Oh, that's right. So our lockdown means we're only allowed essential items. So supermarket, pharmacies, yeah. and there's some online stores. And in those online stores, you can only get like winter clothes. Yeah. Um, you, um, I was going to say utensils, uh, appliances, yeah. and stuff for school, like computers and that, to be able okay. to keep studying. But okay. no sports gear, nothing. So no Wilson, soccer ball for me. No, nothing. So you haven't seen anyone for, for five weeks? Go, yeah, going on five weeks. I haven't been able to hug someone, which is oh. huge for me. I'm an introvert, but touch is my love language. <laughs> oh, no. So I've had amazing church members and friends come and drop bags of Fijoas or oranges or apples at the gate or bring well, over right. treats. But I can't hug anyone. So I see them and I want to hug them. <laughs> so I want to stand at a distance. And usually I say thank you with a hug. So I'm just thank you thank you what do you how do you hug socially distant i don't know hi you just it, yeah can't high five even which is usually an introvert's dream yeah. just high five keep the distance none of that you can do the bro eyebrow raise or the lips is like i seen i seen that video go around viral a whole bunch of the um uh footy players and celebrity guys doing that whole pasta i don't know pasta acknowledgement thing across so that's kind of that's kind of a cool thing maybe you can do create one where we can like you turn around and hug someone and pass it on to someone else like that as they feel your embrace i don't know whatever it is yeah. um, hey i noticed that you said that uh, you've had church members come and visit you tell us um what's your what's your what's your current role and uh why are these people dropping things off to you at your house <laughs> So currently I work as a local church pastor in Nelson. Okay. Um, I do that part-time and then for our South New Zealand conference, I'm working in the area of discipleship as well. Yeah. So church members come over because the, I'm their pastor and they really want to take care of me, which is yeah. amazing. I feel yeah. like they've given more to me than I've been able to give back since yeah. we've been in lockdown. Yeah. Man, so what is, what is discipleship? Like, and I want to I want to touch in on that because you know I did warn you yesterday when we were going <laughs> to chat. But you know how do you do that effectively? And so one, give us a definition, um, and then I guess two, probably how that links into your role. 
And then three, how is it done in COVID-19? So that's three deep questions. And now I'm gonna wait for your response. You are so mean. <laughs> you did not warn me enough about these. <laughs> Um, and I could get in trouble if I get this wrong. It's all right. It's all right. We'll, so, we'll, we'll just edit. <laughs> so discipleship, I guess what, what we're talking about is an incarnational model of discipleship. Yeah. So not that um, someone comes to Christ and we get around them and we nurture them and we teach them how to read the Bible and how to serve well in the local church and we all get nice and fat on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's, it's Which isn't a bad I wouldn't mind being fat on the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Yeah, it depends if we're being obedient to the Holy Spirit taking us to the next level, though. Oh, come on now, Pastor. <laughs> and incarnational model means that you go and you impact someone's life and you um, role model to them and you teach them and you mentor them. And then they go on and do the same for someone else who goes on and does the same for someone else who goes on and does the same for someone else. Yeah. Which is a beautiful thing because ultimately my goal as a pastor to, is to be redundant yeah <laughs> because <laughs> which is funny because everyone's trying to hang on to their jobs during COVID-19 and Sarah Jane's trying to get rid of her job I'm trying to get rid of my job if the members of our church um who are in love with Jesus yeah and are compelled to share Jesus in a meaningful way through relationships yeah and being part of community it's transformational and it will change our communities. And if it means I'm on my knees 24 hours a day interceding on behalf of the people, and that's what I do, so they can be empowered to pass on, to empower to pass on. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. That's how the gospel is going to be spread. Yeah. I think sometimes it's, a, it's comfortable yeah. for us to feel good and be in love with Jesus and not really have to do anything about it except we'll just bask in the hope that we have. Yeah. But since when has Jesus been our secret to keep? And since when have we had the right after the Holy Spirit has come in and transformed our lives to not let the Holy Spirit complete its work by yeah. letting us go forth and share with someone else? I'm just going to write down some notes on that. I think that's very <laughs> clear. You're getting me all passionate. So how did you, how did you get, so here's a question. How did you get to where you are in terms of being passionate? Like who did it for you? Who was the transformative community for you that that really stirred your heart to go, I want to head in this direction of discipleship or empowering or being transformative, being a transforming, transformative community to someone else. I don't even know if that You're gonna be editing yourself. I will. It doesn't matter. I like I like raw and uncut. Uh, I've had a lot of different influences in my life. One being my home church. Oh yes, Ray Ray. <laughs> <laughs> You have a question. Oh, you want me to say you? Yeah, no. No, yeah, I'm going to start church. from the beginning. I'm going to start yeah. from the beginning. So yeah. I came into the church when I was 10 years old and I came into a church plant. And from the moment I stepped foot inside those doors, yeah. I can remember we were always empowered as children and young people yeah. to be doing the ministry, to be fully engaged with our community. Yeah. Uh, and it transformed that when I became an adult and was working in my community, it was natural for my church to be part of my workplace community. Right. And so I just grew up in a church where it's normal to serve. It's normal to be a young person and preaching and freaking out, but in a community where it's safe to make mistakes and they nurture you and they grow you and you go out and share your faith. It was just so normal to me. And so when I came, ended up coming into ministry, which was a real interesting journey. <laughs> Sorry, me. for those who are watching, why is Ray constantly laughing at Sarah James' responses? Just because a lot of inside jokes. There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a history of our relationship. <laughs> and so coming into ministry and working full time for a local church as a youth pastor, I came across more people, one of course being Ray Ray, who became one of those people in my ear who said, God's got a bigger plan. Take it a step further. You can do this until God really just spoke to me quite audibly and in your face and said, you haven't listened to everyone that I've been talking through, <laughs> but now listen to me. And you were actually there, Ray Ray, when this happened. Yeah. And so it's been a real interesting journey of myself being discipled and being introduced to Christ and having those relationships nurtured and then God speaking through other people into my life to take it a step further, who spoke to someone else to take it a step further. And I've just been nudged and sometimes feeling like I'm pushing like freestyle off a cliff 
<laughs> um, into this amazing world called ministry. That isn't ministry because I'm a pastor. It's yeah. ministry because I surrendered to God's will for my life. Yeah. And um, the most recent experience was going over to the Middle East um, on a discipleship tour. And from the Middle East all the way to America, there was one thing in common from someone sitting on the floor in a school, yeah. barefoot, having just done a class with refugee women, all the way through to Rick Warren's mega church of 40,000 people every weekend. Wow. One thing stood out from Middle East to America, and that was a clear heart for the lost. Mm. And every single person that witnessed to us of what they were doing in ministry spoke out of personal relationship and daily experience with Jesus Christ. So that's and, a, so you're talking about a personal response for the lost, not not a corporate sense like the church or the preacher person is telling us well, you should have a heart for the lost and then therefore it's like oh well i guess i should have a heart for the lost that's just a personal indwelling fire up the holy spirit in your heart yeah. going it breaks my heart just to sit here and think that there are people out there who don't know what i know or don't feel what i feel yep and the only reason why we do church is to equip people and grow in them, their heart for the lost, so they can go out and reach people. Yeah. yeah, it's just such a beautiful thing when you see that it's not qualifications that allows for God to use you. It's your surrender and willingness to be used by the Holy Spirit. And just because I'm a pastor, it doesn't make me any better, any more qualified to do it than someone else in my church who may be a retired person or it may be a 10 year old. Yeah. And I can appreciate the work that pastors do, obviously, like myself being one, and uh, you and I have been colleagues before. But in, in light of COVID-19, obviously, that way of connecting and engaging and being transformative community to people, that's been a bit challenged. How have you found that being, obviously, number one, you, you are isolated, but, you know, you're living on your own. How, does, how has that been for you? Um. It's sucked at the beginning. Can I say sucked? I don't know if I can. But That's you right. can I'm not going to edit that bit. I'm going to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really challenging. I'm not a public person. I'm not a person that really likes social media or yeah. putting myself out there. So in one way, I've really had to challenge myself, being completely outside my comfort zone, and even do something like this and being willing to share yeah, yeah. on this platform. It, you're so vulnerable. Yeah. You can't um, fake it. Yeah. You can do it for a photo and maybe a short thing. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, those selfies in front of the mirror. Filter. But when you're Filter. online, especially when you're live, which I've had to do a few things of, who you are is what people get. Yeah. And so you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that's been a real challenge is empowering people to get used to technology in a way where they never ever would have used it before. So yeah. there's those moments of frustration because you're trying to equip people so that they can then share their faith. Yeah. But it's been a beautiful thing too. I've never yeah. had so much Adventist contact outside <laughs> of the Sabbath <laughs> as I have had during COVID-19. Yeah. Suddenly we haven't become about the seventh day Adventist. Yeah. We've become seven-day Adventists. Wow. Where every single day of our lives, we're being intentional about reaching out to each other and to our neighbours. People are so friendly now. Yeah. You've got to keep two metres distance in New Zealand, but they're walking past, waving at you from across the road, yeah. making sure that you get to say hello. Yeah. So those things have been amazing. The calling back to community. So yeah. community isn't just our church because we meet in four walls. Community is where I live. It's when yeah. I walk out of my driveway, who do I see? Who can I reach out to? Who can I help? Who can I pray over? Yeah. It's walking around our neighborhood because we're only allowed to exercise in our own neighborhoods. Yeah. It's walking around our communities and praying over them and taking notice. Oh, there's actually a whole family that live in that house. Oh, I never realized that that person and that person were connected. Yeah, I've been so stalking people's like front yards and their houses. I'm like, ooh, 
I like the way that house is built. Maybe one day I'll build my house like that. Or maybe I have a swing off a tree. <laughs> that's, that's what I catch myself doing when I'm walking early in the morning. Yeah. So the connection throughout the week, the way people are reaching out and really being true community to each other. And having that time of worship on the weekend is awesome. It's really special, but it's not confined to only that time. Yeah. And that's been a beautiful experience that we've been forced into. Yeah. However, I think it's a beautiful biblical model mm. to how we do, not, no, sorry, not how we do church, how we be church, how yeah. we grow as people of God and how yeah. we share that with those around us. Yeah, it's very evident to see that, um, I guess, in, in the spiritual, relational space, um, you, you know, you're really being intentional and thriving. How has it been in, in, in regards to your, I guess, to your physical health? Because I know that you say you walk around the block. Um, what have you been doing to keep yourself active? Or now that this you're bored of yourself? Share, this is where I share my embarrassing moments. You're so mean. Uh, so for me, a huge reality is routine is really important. And one of the reasons it's important in health and well-being for me is I, is I have multiple sclerosis. Yeah. So this is something I was only diagnosed with in my first year out of college and um, ministry as a pastor. What year was that again? 2016 was my yeah, first yeah. year. Yeah, 2016. So fairly new. So four yeah. years ago. Yeah, four years ago. Um, so, so that's when... I first came and had the huge symptoms of MS, was diagnosed the next year. I've been on this huge, crazy roller coaster, and you were there for it, yeah. health journey yeah. of um, changing my whole lifestyle, what I eat, exercise, where I spend my time, having yeah. work life balance, um, having good social connections. I've been on this huge journey. Yeah. And it's incredible. Like I can, I mean, I've, 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 we like we physically see it as a family. Like we know, but behind the scenes, off, you know, off, off camera, off recording. Like we know that journey for you. Yeah. Yep. And I can do before and after shots, and people will see the evidence of it. Um, but apart from physical evidence, there's been so much that's changed in my life. Yeah. And so to answer your question, during lockdown, I've had to find ways to maintain balance, maintain routine, still get up in the morning, still shower, still have times for workouts, still eat well. Yeah. And yes, I'm so sick of my own cooking. <laughs> um, and still try and have healthy social connections that yeah. don't feel like work because everything is a Zoom meeting. Yeah. And so I live on a hill in beautiful Nelson. Yeah. And so I have a circuit that's just over a K and it takes me about 15 minutes because I've got to walk downhill for some of it, which for some people, they usually go, yes, downhill, that's awesome. <laughs> well, if you're like me and you have MS, downhill is horrible <laughs> because I get dropsy in my left leg. So yeah. sometimes automatic pilot, you think, yeah, my I don't even have to say, lift your left leg, lift your right leg, lift your left leg. For me, my brain may say, lift your leg, and my foot says, oh, no way, I'm staying where I was. And so I've had a couple of really good face plants downhill, I'm not going to lie, and I've taken a good amount of skin off my knee. You know when kids cry and you're like, yeah. just a little, you know, scrape on your knee, you're fine. Yeah. No, I have all the sympathy in the world <laughs> for the kids who scrape their knees. So I took, and I've tripped upstairs as well, because my foot wouldn't lift, so I've well, I mean, look, for, a good five meters. for someone who's listening in, like, obviously, you, we, we have a weird sense of humor because we can laugh at this stuff. But for anyone who's thinking is like, yeah, how does this MS thing work? Like, how does it not mm. make your leg? What's it like when you're walking and then your leg just doesn't want to work? And then you just, I don't know, just explain what that feeling is like to go. Are you angry? Are you upset? Are you, yes. are you laughing in your head? <laughs> yes. it's all so I get really frustrated. My biggest frustration now, especially that I'm healthier, yeah. is that my brain and my body are fit enough to do things, but they just don't cooperate with each other. Right. So for people who don't know, in the most basic terms, the information between my brain and my body is interrupted. And so my body doesn't always do what my brain tells it to do. And so, yes, it's hugely frustrating. And I get nerve disease as part of it. And I, it's an autoimmune and a nerve disease. Yeah. And so, and it gets worse over time. 
Um, and so, yes, I get frustrated. I am independent, stubborn, <laughs> strong woman. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> In the best way. And I get frustrated. I get angry. Um, yes. I've had to deal with a lot of anxiety as part of my MS. So every time yes. something like this happens, my anxiety can flare up. I can feel um, depressed, 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 depressed. <laughs> depressed. I can get oh, so every emotion. Yeah. I've had to, I can laugh at myself. I'm great at laughing at myself yeah. if you haven't picked up on it already. Yeah. So I can laugh at myself. I can be embarrassed. Um, I can feel deflated. I can question whether I should be in ministry. Like I definitely went through that season where am, am uh -huh. I going to be able to be in ministry? I went through a season for people who don't know I'm godmother to yeah. Ray Ray's daughters. Yeah. And I went through a time when I seriously had to ask, am I going to have to give up this privilege? Yeah. Because I won't be able to physically look after them. Yeah. Um, my symptoms were pretty bad. I was on level three. Um, how, many, how, how many levels are there in terms of MS? There's, there's 10 levels and yeah. people who are higher on the level scale, like I have a huge heart for what you go through. I can only imagine the pain that it entails. For me, level three looked like I couldn't walk in the dark without falling over anymore. I had chronic headaches every single day. Um, I had dropsy, so tripping over all the time. Uh, nerve pain in my fingers and my feet, um, involuntary tw twitching. Um, I couldn't overheat. Anytime I'd overheat, I'd just be ready to fall over. Like there were a whole lot of things that were happening. And that's just um, level three. Yeah, that was level three, so. Crazy, and I can't even imagine what level five would even look like, let alone level 10, like, that's just level three. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'm just, I'm just level trying to. Level three, uh, by God's grace and a whole lot of help, including nutritionist, yeah. amazing personal trainer. Yeah. Who, like. Shout out, personal, shout out, you can do a shout, shout out. Shout out to Joshua Keegan. Yo, Josh. my man. Um, when I first went to the gym, I'd cry every single session. I was learning how to balance on one leg for 30 seconds. I wasn't lifting weights, stepping up onto anything. I was learning how to balance. Wow. And even then I would experience anxiety. You, yeah. So it was crazy, the journey that I was on. I'm on level one now and I've maintained level one. Yeah. So that's about as good as it gets when you have MS. After okay. my first year of being on level one, they said, Let's retest you because we just want to double check that you actually have MS because you're doing so well. <laughs> and I made the mistake when I was sent the blood forms to Google what they were testing for. Oh, wow. Which was um, a lot worse than MS. So my prayer went from, Lord, why do I have MS? to, Lord, please let it be MS. <laughs> <laughs> what an unusual request. That's like, I don't want to have MS. Wait, I want to have MS now rather than the alternative. Yeah, crazy. So it's been a crazy journey, but a journey of faith and well-being. And I know how stubborn I am and what it took, mm. or what I needed in my life in order for me to find that balance and really honor God mm. and be a good steward of my health and everything he's given me. That's been my own journey. And it hasn't been easy. Like I sit before you now and yeah. I've got energy and I can smile as I talk about it. But every day I don't smile about it. Last yeah. week when I fell up the stairs, I didn't smile about yeah. it. Yeah. I was frustrated. Yeah. Um, you feel the loneliness at my times when I'm in most need of others. Yeah. I feel my loneliness the greatest. Being single in ministry and in isolation by myself. That's my reality. But yeah, I've just had to choose. It's a choice I make every day. I've okay. got to be active. I've got to be well. I've got too much to live for and too much to be thankful for. And I just want to honor God and I want to honor the people in my life who are there for me, no matter what. The people who rubbed my back and rubbed my joints and sat with me and gave me wheat bags um, when, when everything was sore, or who prayed with me like you yeah, yeah. and who had to listen to me going, I don't know if I should be in ministry. <laughs> and you're going, oh my gosh, how many times does God have to tell you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm blessed. I'm yeah. so blessed. Yeah. Um, what has been the greatest impact of MS on your ministry? Like the way that you do leadership now? What, what, what have you seen the positive outcomes from having what you have 
and, and learning to deal with it and cope with it? How has that positively impacted your leadership? Oh, I guess in some ways it's been sharing the journey. So who I pastor, you know, who I'm pastoring, um, I'm very open and I don't share everything. I don't share all the details. There's some things people don't want to know and they don't need to know. <laughs> but I'm, authenticity is something I really value. Okay. And so I'm open and honest and I journey with people as yeah. I expect them to share. Yeah. I need to be prepared to share. Yeah. Um, trusting that sometimes vulnerability happens in places that you don't always know are completely safe yet. Yeah. But you're worth, it's worth the risk because you know the depth of relationship that can come from it can have a huge impact. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely impacted my ministry in t terms of I get asked to do things such as this where normally I would have run from. But now I'm like, who am I? Like God's worked in such amazing ways in my life and he's brought me from strength to strength. And if just a little part of my journey can help someone else, then who am I to say no to God? Yeah. Like it doesn't make it any less scary. Like I've been nervous since you asked me yesterday and <laughs> last night I'm like, should I really be doing this Lord? Like I don't want to, can I back out of it? And I'm honest about dialoguing with God about that. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, I just choose to trust him. So it's definitely um, helped me be more obedient to yeah. the leading of his Holy Spirit and trust in the opportunities that he gives me. Yeah. What do you wish people knew about, I guess, um, MS in regards to in their, in their connection with you? Like, obviously people are like, oh yeah, I know MS, but like, what, what, what do you wish that they would know in terms of you and MS? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh... Like, obviously they're not treating you differently. Or, or have people been treating you differently? Like, have you sensed like they're super, super, super sensitive? Like you got to pick up a pen, Sarah Jane, don't exhaust yourself. <laughs> <laughs> your, 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 hand, your hand may miss it and it'll fall to the ground and the pen may, you know, slap you on the face. Like, yeah. I don't know, have, how have people responded? But what, what do you want people to know? Uh, sometimes people can be really overprotective. And there are times when I want people to really trust that I know myself and I've been on a journey that now means I'm self-aware enough to set my own boundaries. Because the last thing you want to feel as an adult is that someone is telling you what to do out of the best interest, but as if you cannot do it for yourself. Yeah. So it's just trust me. Trust me that I know my boundaries. Yeah. Um, that's definitely one. Yeah, that's definitely one. Yeah. What was the rest of your question? Oh, I, I guess, um, I I, yeah, I think you pretty much um, answered, an an answered it. Um, what has been a big oh. blessing, a big blessing for you since having MS and the way you lead? Ooh. Um, Man, so many blessings since. <laughs> it seems weird. I can't even believe I'm hearing it come out of my mouth. So many blessings since being diagnosed with MS and being on this journey, which include the opportunity I have to witness to others because people will naturally ask me what's been the difference. And I'm talking about people who may not know God sure, or may not necessarily be attending church. And God has been the difference. Yeah me choosing to knowing that I'm not doing it on my own strength. Yeah. That's, that's definitely been a huge blessing. Being able to write, uh, being able to write again is a huge blessing. I couldn't write more than one line before. Wow. Being able to text my friends yeah. is a blessing because before I couldn't even send a text message without having to take breaks in between. That's incredible. Sorry, Ray Ray, I just have to stop. There's someone dropping food off at my door. Oh, part of the interview. That's awesome. You can keep going, grab it and, and, and we'll be back. Oh my gosh. Thank 
you. I'm just doing an online interview, but that's awesome. I said, no, no, you're fine. So I'm not lying. <laughs> I just had food dropped off. That is incredible. <laughs> you have your own Uber Eats time. Uber oh. Eats. Soup patties and a sweet slice. That is incredible. What are the, that's the cool, this is probably the coolest interview I've had yet to date. That's, <laughs> that's a blessing. Job. That's a blessing. Definitely. Yeah. People care. People yeah. care. And for me, one blessing that actually I've had to learn is that allowing for people to take care of me is me allowing them to be blessed. Ooh, come on now. I know what it's like when... Speak more into that. I know what it's like when someone is in need and I want to help them and they're refusing that help or they keep saying, no, no, I'm okay. And I can feel frustrated because I want to help. I genuinely want to help. And it tells us in scripture that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And it's true. But when we're always rejecting someone else giving, we're actually rejecting them being blessed by being allowed to give. Mm. And I've really had to learn to let people help me and not feel stink about it. I'm so stubborn. Not feel stink about it, but actually trust the blessing that God's giving them out of being able to give to me. Yeah. Yeah. If it was me, I'd milk it. I'd be like, thank you for the meal. Can you cook um, some curry, some Indian <laughs> next time? <laughs> Just mix up the dishes a bit. I mean, look, love, I'll, I'll bless you. <laughs> God will bless you, but just next time, make another dish in instead. What has been, what has been um, your go-to meal? What's oh. been, like, if you get frustrated at cooking, what's the one thing you're like, I'll just cook this because it's good and I can't be bothered. Okay, so everyone's probably going to go, ooh. Um, because I'm vegan and gluten-free and that's been part of my journey, which yeah. has actually been awesome. So my go-to, what I really enjoy having, if, especially if I'm sick of actually cooking, is getting a gluten-free wrap and putting it in the pan with this bean mix that's like, um, it's not my medium bean mix. It's got a bit of spice to it. It's got some corn in it and stuff, chucking some avocado, chucking some vegan cheese, Toast it both sides, pull it out, and it's just like, yep, it's good, everything good. I know a whole bunch of people are probably saying, gross, vegan cheese, gluten free wrap. <laughs> but man, food for me, because it's made me well, yeah. is a blessing. So I get excited. I open my fridge and it's full of veggies and different things, and I don't feel like it every day, but I eat every mouthful going, this is making me well. This yeah. is fueling my body so I can keep serving Jesus. That is such a cool um, mindset around food. Like you're, you're fueling to be well. Mm. How, how did that come? To, like, you know, that's a part of your thought process now. Like when you eat, for me, I'm just like, I'm just going to eat because I can eat. Like, you know, <laughs> speak, can, can you speak a little bit into that? How that shift has been made to transition or to, to your current eating patterns? Yeah, mine was gradual. So when I first went to my nutritionist, she pretty much started from the get-go and said, well, I want you to cut out gluten. And I think she said dairy in the first lot as well. And I, in my mind, I grew up on a dairy farm, so I was all about that meat, that dairy products, good bread, butter, all that stuff. And so when she said that to me, she explained why and what it was doing to my body. And because I was already at this place where I was almost desperate to be better because yeah. I did not want to keep living the way I was living and I didn't want MS to become what I was defined by. Yeah. I didn't want MS to rule my life. I wanted to put Jesus back in that place. It's basically what I decided. I looked at your girls and I said, I'm doing it for them because I couldn't do it for me at that point yeah because I didn't think enough of myself to consider that that was enough yeah and so I just got educated yeah I started watching things and as soon as I knew why yeah then it became it just didn't become an issue like I stopped gluten overnight just like that haven't touched it unless I've done so unknowingly ever since like I just haven't touched it I'm just it's just not part of my equation. But I don't look at everything I've taken out of my diet too. Yeah. I look at 
it and I'm like, man, look at everything I can eat. Like most people are like, oh, we feel so sorry for you. When we did this discipleship tour, man, America was the worst because it was so hard for me to get decent food. But I'm like, I'm okay. I'm fine. If I don't have a meal, like, yeah, I might be a bit more tired, but I'm okay. I'm well. Yeah. I don't, I don't, food doesn't dictate. Um, I don't base eating on my emotions. I don't go, I feel like, I'm like, man, what's good for me? What does my body need? Yeah. What does my body need right now? I haven't had enough green veggies today. That's what my body needs. I'm going to eat it. Yeah. And then I'll ask, so how can I make this in a way that I'm really going to enjoy it? Because you do yeah. want to enjoy your food. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But I had to choose, am I going to be slave to my cravings and what I want um, to eat but based on my feelings? Or am I going to choose to honor God and out of that and honoring him, am I going to let him work in me from the inside out and let him be the master of my emotions? Yeah. Man, that's pretty hard out, eh? I hear myself say it and I'm like, man, that's so hard out. I am, it hasn't I been am, easy. I don't yeah. want people to think it's been easy. Like you've no. seen it, Ray Ray. My yeah. journey has been yeah. over years, step by step, kg by kg, strength by strength. Because I haven't even measured how much weight I've lost. Like I haven't gone, I've lost this many kgs this week or whatever it is. I haven't done that. I haven't based it on weight. Losing the weight has been a default of me choosing to honor God with my body. That's yeah. been the yeah. default. That hasn't been my goal. I want to be well. Yeah. I just want to be well. I want to serve Jesus for as long as I can, as long as there's breath in my lungs. Yeah. So what's your routine from day to day? Like in terms of, you know, obviously your food, but do you have a set routine that you do that to sort of keep you in the same category <laughs> now that you're getting bored of yourself? So bored. Um, I get up every day. I have my, well, this is currently what I do. I have my time with God. Yeah. Um, being in ministry, I choose to be a student of the word. And this is a new discipline I'm incorporating into my day from 9am. So really intentional about having it within working hours, so to speak, and recognizing my role as a pastor is to be a student of the word. So being in the word, um, doing my meetings and all that sort of stuff I have to do, but early afternoon, that's just when the, it's the best time. My body is being fueled and it's the best time for me to work out. So that's what I block out. Very rarely will I compromise that. Six days a week is what I like to do because it's yeah. part of my every day. Yeah. Um, I've seen that yeah. you've been um, involved in a uh, push-up challenge. Oh, what, I am what? not a fan about upper body work. <laughs> like weights is okay. I like working out my legs. Like I can push a lot on a box or leg press or whatever it is but get me to do something with my arms mate <laughs> so yeah i've been nominated for that which is fun thanks pastor will for nominating me um but it's role modeling and yeah. i'm not trying to make out that i've got it all together just because i can do a pretty below average female press up <laughs> But it's promoting life. That's what I do. It's part of my day. It's part of my workout that I do after lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Sit in the sun. Yeah. I sit every day that there's sunshine out, I sit in the sun. Yeah. It's all those things. I make sure that I take note of the view. So I'm blessed to have a beautiful view by my house. Yeah. As long, I, as, you, I, as, as, long as you can see the clouds, that's all you care about. Oh, clouds in the South Island are awesome. <laughs> They're so beautiful. Um, I have a breathing app on my watch. I haven't, I have a watch that monitors my heart rate that gives me a kick in the butt to say, I haven't stood enough today. You yeah. haven't closed your movement ring today. You haven't closed your exercise ring today. Like I sound motivated, but I still need a kick in the butt yeah. <laughs> most days. Yeah. And I, I just choose my, one of my favorite songs is called get out my way. <laughs> no yeah. days off, get out of my lane <laughs> because I have to push myself and I have to make that choice every day to be active, to be well. Yeah. And I, and you know what I love about that, Sarah Jane, is that, um, you know, that word has come up again throughout our talk uh, this afternoon. Of, it's a choice. Mm. You know, you really, you really do have a choice to make when you're faced with a difficult circumstance. You can choose to wallow and run away from it or ignore it or let it be and it is what it is. Or 
which I love what you've done. You've chose to be proactive in the space of not only getting your health in check, um, you're trying to be proactive in prolonging your life. Um, you're choosing to, to, to be intentional about how you model uh, your lifestyle. Um, but, but I think it's a beautiful thing. And, and the fact that you've chosen to do this today, I know, I just know how hard it is for you just to do this in this kind of a platform, but I, I appreciate, I appreciate what you're doing. You know, I know that uh, COVID-19 won't make it any easier, but the fact that you're saying it is a choice, you actually have it. Everyone, everyone has a choice. It's how you respond to that choice that, that really makes a difference between thriving or basically the opposite. I don't, mm. What's the opposite to thriving? I'm thriving. Well, I think even if you don't make much of a choice, you're just choosing to survive. Survive, no, survive or thrive. Yeah, survive. yeah, I like that. I'm just saying, I've got breath in my lungs, so I'm gonna keep breathing. I don't really have to think about it, but I'm just gonna keep breathing or I can choose to thrive. And I don't wanna just survive. Like if I've got breath in my lungs, then Jesus still has something for me to do on this earth. And I don't wanna ever find myself again, cause I have found it before, yeah. in a position where I'm asking or preaching something that I'm not living myself or prepared to do myself. So every time I'm preaching about making a choice, I'm not saying I make the right choice every time. I'm saying I still struggle, but I'm going to choose. This is my commitment. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Well, thank you again, Sarah Jane, for your time. I know that uh, you're probably eager to eat that amazing meal that oh. you put out to you. That was what perfect timing was that? That, so that, and that looked delicious. So... Yeah, yeah, you're actually making me hungry now. So I might go down and eat something just because you've got your food. But uh, I've got my food. Appreciate, appreciate your time. Appreciate um, you sharing and being vulnerable with us uh, this afternoon. And again, for anyone who's listening in and watching. Um, if you've been inspired by today's episode and you want to just connect with Sarah Jane, is there a way that they can reach out to you? Where, where can they find you? Obviously in Nelson, but <laughs> email address, I, I don't know, social media handles. I, I, yeah. Where, yeah. I can't where, even say come to Nelson right yeah. now. Uh, Facebook, I'm under SJ Riley. Okay. Um, and uh, Insta, I'm under Sela Riley. Yeah. yeah. S-E-L-A. R-I-L-E-Y. I, those are probably the easiest places to find me. I'm not going to give out my number. No. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Don't maybe, write the maybe after in. isolation, then yeah. But not, <laughs> not while you're in isolation because they're like, well, she has to pick up a phone because she's at home. So yeah. she's choosing to ignore me. She's choosing, choosing to ignore me. Yeah. She's Stranger danger. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone. And uh, yeah, appreciate the time and chat again, Sarah Jane, and to all our listeners and followers. We shall see you on the next episode of Inspiration in Isolation. Bye-bye.